Hey, how's it going, everybody? Marcos Vegas here in Las Vegas for Fight Up TV, being joined with this man right here, Kelly Pavlik. And Kelly, a lot of stuff happening in the world of boxing, but the biggest headlines: Canelo moving up from 168 to cruiserweight. That, to me, it's, it's surprising. But what do you make of, of that move? I don't see nothing wrong with it. He's, he's daring to be great. You know, he gets a lot of crap. Um, probably got the best resume as active fighters right now in boxing. Um, if he wants to make that move, I don't see no problem with it. I see nonsense, people talking about Andrade and, and Charlos. Um, them guys are down at 160. You know, Canelo's been campaigning at 168 and 175. Um, you know, so if he wants to make that jump, that's good. I think, like, let's try to get Andrade to fight Charlo. Let's see what happens with that fight. Let's get Andrade or Charlo to fight, you know, one of the guys like Billy Joe Saunders or, or Caleb Plant now. Um, but right now, I think it's a, a big move for Canelo. Um, I'm not. I'm, I'm truly not a big fan of it. I think you're biting off more than he could chew, but we'll see what happens. What do you make of the critics criticizing that move and saying that he's fighting the easiest champion and it's another cherry pick? Well, I don't know who they want him to fight. I mean, if you go back just in time, I mean, go back to even like Roberto Duran. I know I'm going to take a lot of shit for this, okay? Roberto, uh, Roberto Duran fought guys like uh, Acuna, who was 0-2, after he held the world title. So if social media was around back then, I wonder how he would get butchered. You know what I mean? So you have to really, like, you know, let's cut the shit and, and be honest on that. Um, but for him to go up there and fight guys like that, still, no matter what, people don't, unless you do it, nobody understands how hard it is to jump up that many weight classes and be able to do that. Especially, I think he, what, uh, he won his world title at junior middleweight. I think he turned pro at welterweight mm -hmm. so for him to even consider going to cruiserweight as a big match you know and guys like um Ro uh, roberto duran chavez and all the other greats they had fights well they had titles where they fought guys 0 2 0 and 3 so i don't want to hear that shit no more you know they're saying why not fight Breedis? you know this guy is there to to be beat for him because of canelo's skill they're saying canelo's skill makes up for the gap in weight no. Okay, so to be honest with you, what I would like to see from uh, not only a fighter but a boxing fan, yes, I think a guy like Benavidez right now, I think that's more um, more for the public. You know, I think the public wants to see that fight, and that's a great matchup. And I think Benavidez stands a great chance of winning that fight. So I can understand a little bit where fans are getting mad, saying, "Well, he's jumping the cruiserweight now, and you got you know big matchup still at super middleweight." Um, Again, I, I don't know. I mean, but let the guy go. I mean, he's fought everybody. You know, who else do you really want him to fight? They're saying he's cherry picking, but who really hasn't in all the eras? Just not this era, but all the eras. Who hasn't really cherry picked their fights? Again, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but go back to Roberto Duran. He fought a guy 0 and 2 while he held the world title, the WA uh, world title, lightweight. So how come he got away with that? But you, everybody's going to bust Canelo's balls. You know what I mean? So I know I'm going to get shit on it. You know, I know everybody's going to watch this and there's going to be the comment section. But tell me where I'm wrong. You know, go to, go to BoxRec, pull that up, and actually look at the records and tell me where I'm wrong. No, I, I think, like, regardless of the skill level of that guy, like, it's still, like, this guy outweighs him by 30 pounds on fight night. Like, he's, he's practically going to be fighting a heavyweight the night of the fight. And, like, regardless of skill and regardless of what this Absolutely. guy brings in, so it's a bigger freaking guy, like a lot bigger guy. This guy is, he's going to be coming down where most guys are coming down from 168 or, or, or let's take that back. For, he's fighting that super middleweight where guys are coming down from maybe 182. You're talking about guys coming down from like 210, 205 to fight him at cruiserweight. That's a ballsy jump, especially for a guy who, who really made his, um, his name at junior middleweight. Okay, so give the guy credit. He's daring something that a lot of people don't do. There's only a handful of all the fighters, all the world champions, there's only a handful that has done what Canelo's doing. And I don't think anybody's doing these multiple weight jumps like he's doing right now either. No, they're not. I mean, so give the man credit. You know, I, I think boxing fans, instead of criticizing and using the platform, the social media platforms to criticize fighters, enjoy it. Enjoy what you guys are seeing. I mean, you got weight classes right now in boxing. For instance, tomorrow night, you got what a fight that is between Porter and Crawford. You got Spence, you got Boots Ennis, you got Virgil Ortiz Jr. Go to middleweight, go to um, light heavyweight, super middleweight, lightweight, tank, Tiafimo. I mean, so boxing right now is really hot. And instead of finding ways to criticize and beat these fighters up, enjoy the fucking sport and just relax and, and, and enjoy, you know? Um, I don't get it. So I always hear, and it's negative, like I hear like, all the negative things about the, the fighters or the fights and well they're not fighting nobody and he's ducking he's cherry picking he's jumping here well they've always done it the only thing is social media wasn't around in the 70s and 80s for the people to sit there and get on and, and talk shit so 
tomorrow night, you mentioned it, you know, tremendous fight against uh, Sean Porter and uh, undefeated Terrence Crawford. Break that fight down for us. Uh, a lot of people feel that Crawford is the favorite coming into this fight. Yeah, you know what, um, and, and he could be. Uh, Porter has not been in a fight or a bad fight where he's ever got beaten up. We've seen with Spence, who's a big, strong guy. I mean, Porter's a dog. He comes in, he fights, he puts the pressure on you. Um, it's going to be a real test for Crawford. So. We're going to see what happens. Uh, you know, I'm not picking a, a winner in this fight. I'm sitting back as a fan. Oh, no, I, I'm, I'm sitting back as a fan. I'm going to watch and enjoy it. But I think it's going to be an entertaining fight. And you got to remember, Crawford is just smart. He, he's an unbelievable fighter. He's got so many skills. So this fight is going to be entertaining to watch. You being a fighter and having that perspective, like how, how do you see the fight un unrolling as the rounds go on tomorrow night? I see Porter getting in Crawford's ass, excuse my language. Um, I see him getting in his ass a little bit and, and like really making it a fight. But I could also see Crawford making some changes towards the later rounds and, and maybe pulling ahead. Or I could see Crawford not being able to find an answer to the pressure that Porter's going to put on. Because believe me, as soon as Porter gets hit with a good shot, everything's out the window. And he's going, he's going to pressure, he's going to put the, the heat on uh, Crawford. So it's going to be really interesting. Like I said, that's why I want to sit back. I don't want to make a prediction. I'd rather just enjoy the fight and not worry about anybody criticizing me for my pick. And I think it's going to be really entertaining. And I think the, the final rounds, like 8, 9, maybe even 10, 11, are going to be the deciding factor in that fight. Yeah, Sean Porter fights are always super close because he, he's active and, and he makes it really hard to, not hard, but like the judges looking at his activity from like minute one to like the third minute. It's, it's difficult at times to judge his fights and I feel like that, that works towards him in this fight also. It, it does because he picks it up the last 30 seconds. You know, everybody talks about still in a round. I'm not a big fan of that. You know, I know that there's three minutes in a round, so I score a round on three minutes, not 30 seconds. But judges score it and, and you better believe that um, Porter is going to come in the last 30 seconds and try to still a round. He's He's going to make it an ugly fight for Crawford and Crawford, which I know is in good shape and he's ready for it, but Crawford got to definitely make sure that he's in the best shape because he's going to be in for a fight tomorrow, no matter what. If that fight ends in six rounds, Crawford's going to be in for a fight for six rounds. If Crawford wins and say he knocks him out or has a dominant performance, in your opinion, do you put him as number one at 147 pounds? Yeah, but you got guys, like I said, um, I know Virgil Ortiz is still young and he's coming up, but he's making noise. You got uh, guys like Bootsy and us that's making big noise. Um, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I guess you could put him number one because he's beating the guys, but you still got Spence who beat Porter, you know, so where do you put Spence at? Just because he's been a little bit inactive, I mean, Spence is still a live dog too. So, I mean, overall, that 147 weight class is just loaded with talent. And hopefully that the promoters and everybody can get together and make these big fights that everybody wants to see. No, I, I agree. Uh, quickly, the, the Wilder Fury 3 fight, uh, I didn't get a chance to talk to you about it. What would you make of it? Fury looked great. You know, he, it was a great fight for heavyweight. You know, everybody's giving them problems. Everybody's talking shit about them. Like, oh, I can't believe there was a slop fast, this, that. Listen, you got, it, it wasn't the 80s. You know, in the 80s, I think your tallest guy was, what, 6'4"? Okay, so really, let's think about it. You, you got, yeah, you got a guy like, Fury, who is six foot nine, two hundred and seventy pounds, and a guy like uh, Wilder, who's six seven, two hundred and twenty pounds. Those were two big guys in there who were able to go twelve rounds like that. It was a great fight. I think it actually brought back the heavyweight division. And people can't talk shit. I mean, it's a different era. I mean, guys are athletes are advancing. They're they're evolving, at bigger, stronger, faster, and you're starting to see that. I mean, your heavyweights average six six, six seven. These guys can fight, and um, you know that that Fury Wilder fight, the third one, what a great fight! And you got to tip your hat to both guys. I mean, even Wilder, yeah, unfortunately he got beat, and he got beat up pretty good, but he put a hell of a fight up. You know, he showed nobody could ever question his heart and his balls, and uh, it was great for boxing. Usyk now is the unified champion, but many see Fury as the number one heavyweight. How does a fight between Fury and Usyk go down? So that's a good point. So what's funny about that is Usyk back in the day, Chris Bird. And guys like that where you're small, considered small guys who were like 6'2", 6'1", and they could box. And then you got guys like today, like Yusik, who is 6'4", 220-some pounds. He's considered a small heavyweight, right? He could box for 12 rounds. He could throw punches. So it really makes it entertaining. I, I think what Fury, if he could stay there and what Fury style, I think uh, Yusik stands a good chance with his boxing ability. I, I truly do. Um, you know, then again, if... Fury comes in and lays 277 pounds on him the entire fight. That can make a big difference too. People don't realize that when you got a big body putting that on you the entire time, you wear out. Kelly, it was great catching up with you as always. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it here with Kelly Pavlik, former world champion Marcos Vegas here for Fight Up TV in Las Vegas.